Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this follow-up video to our Hypershade overview, I wanted to talk about a topic that is very important when dealing with the Hypershade and connecting nodes together and linking different attributes together. So first of all, let me open the Hypershade. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it, but for this example video, I'm actually going to switch out my perspective camera to simply show me the Hypershade. To do that, I'm going to go to Panels menu panel, and then choose the hypershade panel. So here we've switched out the perspective camera to show us the hypershade. And we still have the channel box over here on the right side, so I'm going to click this tab to kind of collapse that over. So we're strictly looking at the hypershade and nothing else. So the main thing I want to talk about in this video is explaining the, the different kinds of values that are used in the hypershade. There are three main kinds that we're going to talk about. There is a float value a vector value, and also a double value. So first of all, let's talk about a float value. A float value is simply a value that takes one number. To demonstrate this, let's open up just a simple surface material, let's say like a Lambert. So here you can see I have my Lambert material that I've made, and we have several different uh, inputs here for the Lambert. We see a color, ambient color, incandescence, and so on. Now the diffuse value here, this diffuse setting or diffuse attribute of the Lambert, you can see it over here in the property uh, editor. You see how it's just a slider? There's a number here with a slider, and we can drag this slider back and forth. This is essentially a float value. You see how these other ones have a color swatch? You can click on this little box and choose a color for it, for example and we can change that color and it also has a slider here. But the fact that it has a color means it can receive an RGB value, right? An RGB being a triple value or a vector. So what we're dealing with right now is diffuse is a single number value with a slider. And I'll explain why that's important and after I explain what the different kinds of values are. So floating value right there. The next one we've already kind of hinted at is a vector value. Looking at the Lambert 2 node again, let me zoom in actually, you can see that certain things have these little plus boxes that you can click on to expand. You see I can click these little boxes to expand out the ambient color, for example, to show the different R, G, and B channels of that value. Ambient color being this value right here. And the reason why we have an RGB value for it is because it has this little color chooser. We can decide a color value for this attribute. And color values are vectors because they have three numbers involved. R, G, B, the color, for example. We have color R, color G, and color B. Diffuse, we talked about before, doesn't have any kind of uh, plus box next to it. You can't expand the diffuse value or the matte opacity value either to expand any other kinds of values that you can use. Those are floating values. The color, the ambient color, the incandescence, all these things are vectors. Now another kind is a double value, which has only two numbers. So color, typically it's a vector or a triple value, has three numbers involved for RGB. Also you can consider RGB an equivalent to XYZ, okay? XYZ, RGB, those are both vector values. Then we have your floating value, but then your double value is something that only has two numbers. And typically, in Maya anyway, those are referred to as either UV or XY. Let me find an example of that. If we take a look at this node here, this is the Sampler Info Utility, which we're actually going to be talking about relatively soon. But if I select it, and you can look over here in the Property Editor, it has ex examples of all three of these different kinds of values. All of these attributes that take three numerical inputs those are vectors, point world, point OBJ, point camera. Those are all vector values. Then you have the UV coordinate value here, which takes two inputs, a U and a V. That's a double value. Also here, pixel center, that's, either, that's usually a UV or XY, two values. That's another double value. And then facing ratio, a single numerical value, that's a floating value. So if I look at this sampler info node again as my main example, if you notice, all of these nodes in the hypershade have these three stacked 
little squashed ovals in the upper right corner. These essentially are displaying the detail level of the node that we're looking at. And by default, when all three are empty like this, there's empty circles. This is showing us the default level of detail that these nodes can present to us. However, if I click it once, you can see that top circle fills in, and this is showing us a collapsed or a minimum amount of information. Obviously, it's just kind of a, an icon with nothing else. If I click it again, we have this box here that we can type in a message. And if we click it a third time, we have a full listing of everything. I'll do the same thing for the Lambert. If I click it once, collapses it down, click it a second time, we have kind of the bare minimum of this message output as well as the out color. And then a third time, you can see we have a quite a long list, which is this is a longer list than we usually have. If I click it one more time, this is the default list that we typically see. So you can display different levels of detail when it comes to uh, all of your nodes in the Hypershade. So with this sampler info node, I've now expanded it out. I've shown, this is all the detail levels by clicking it three times. Then you can see here, facing ratio, we can drag out values for all of these, but facing ratio, flips normal, and so on, are single float values. Pixel center, if I expand this, we have a X and Y value, this is a double value. And then we have point world, X, Y, and Z values. This is a vector value. And the reason why this is important is because if I were to want to connect the facing ratio of this sampler info node to something on the Lambert. You can see as I drag this line over here to the Lambert, only certain things are able to receive that information. If I hover too long on something, it kind of expands out. If I click it again to close it. So this facing ratio is a float value. If I drag it over here, See, the only things that will accept this float value are other float values. The matte opacity, the diffuse, and the translucence in this case. The color, ambient color, incandescence, those are all vector values, or RGB values, and they won't accept a facing ratio. Now, there is a way to get around this to an extent. If I were to expand the color, for example, I can then drag the facing ratio out to connect to one of these three values. So you can connect the facing ratio to a single channel of the RGB values. And I could, for example, connect it to all three if I wanted. And then what you're essentially doing is connecting it to the to all of the color. And you can see this arrow turn this yellow color. That's essentially meaning it's connected to multiple things inside the color attribute, going to the R, G, and the B. So just so you know, trying to connect the float value to a vector doesn't work. You have to go inside the vector and then connect it singly as a single value to a single channel of that vector uh, attribute. Same with some of that pixel center. You see it's a double value. Nothing wants to take it. If I expand the color like we did with facing ratio, it still doesn't want to take it because this is a double value. Now you notice I if I expand pixel center out, I can choose one of these and drag it over here and then I can use it essentially like a float value because I'm only using half of the numbers that are involved in this pixel center uh, attribute. So you can expand these and use single channels like this for example in interesting ways. And then uh, same with, with a vector value as I mouse over here only other vector uh, attributes will allow a connection because it's vector to vector. I can choose point world to color, for example. And in so doing, what it actually is going to do is connect the X to the R, the Y to the G, and the Z to the B. RGB equals X, Y, Z. So anything, any of these values will connect to their respective channels over here in the color of this material. So to recap, we have three main kinds of data. In the hypershade, you have your floating values, which is a single number, a single uh, value, and values, floating values can only connect to other floating values or to individual channels of vectors or double values. We have our double values, which is a two number value. If we 
the example we have here is pixel center that we've been using it has an X and a Y value, no Z value. And so by clicking and dragging over here, you see this can only affect other double values, which I don't have another example of. But I can, like I said, break these open and use the individual components of these data types to connect to other uh, data types. Okay, so you, again, there is that little workaround that you can kind of connect values together in that way. And then lastly is a vector value, which is an XYZ or an RGB value, and that can connect to other vector values, like so. So I hope that uh, makes sense. As we go forward, we're going to be talking about these different kinds of values a lot, because I want to talk about, we're not going to go through all of these utilities, but we're going to go through a, a sizable chunk of them, especially the more commonly used ones, well, such as the sampler info node here. And with sampler info especially, we're going to be having examples of all three data types to uh, be playing with. So I wanted to make sure you understood what those three data types were, how they connected together, or how they didn't connect together. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or if I missed something, please feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to that. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later.